that we're the only choir in the world who probably sings this next song. Because it, I found it in the back in a songbook that was given to the choir director here by his aunt as a Christmas present in 1914. Oh. <laughs> uh, and this is very, you know, in the book, it's number three in the book. So probably not that many people have that book. Probably not that many people have taken the time to look through the book and picked out this particular song. So we like it, and I thought you'd like to know the story. <clears throat> worship. Blessed are those who way for blame, is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep God's testimonies, who seek God with their whole heart, who also do not wrong, but walk in the God's ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your status, statutes. And I shall not be put to shame. I will praise you with an upright heart, and then and I learn our your righteousness, your righteous ordinance. I will observe your statutes, O forsake me not utterly. Trust and obey.
Please join me in the, the prayer of confession. Gracious God, there are so many times when our hearts turn away from you, when we become angry or judgmental, when we speak falsehoods, when we squander your blessings, when we covet the things that are not ours. Forgive us. Help us speak words of encouragement and love, and help us follow our ways, that we may be your faithful followers. In your holy name we pray. Please take a silent, a few minutes for silent prayer. Our loving God has said, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. Choose life. Brothers and sisters, in the name of God, you are forgiven. Now choose life and turn your hearts towards God. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Stir our sense and our curiosity that your holy word may come alive for us in new and wondrous life. Open our ears and our hearts to your word of life this day. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verses 15 through 20. You may find it in the Old Testament on page 179. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord, your God, then I am commanding you today by loving the Lord, your God, walking in his ways and observing his commandments, decrees and ordinances. Then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord God will bless you in the lands that you are entering to possess. But if your hearts turn away and you do not hear, but you are astray, you but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing, the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving, loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding him fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days so that you may live in the land of that the Lord sworn to give your ancestors to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob.
Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. You can find that in the Old New Testament on page 156. And so, brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as a spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I led you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready for you are still of the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclination? For when you say, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollo, are you, merely, are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants though through whom you came to believe in, as the Lord assigned to each. I plant Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. 
The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants working together. You are God's fields, God's building. I invite the children and youth to come up as they come and share their gifts for Heifer. Let us sing, he's got the whole world in his hands. Good morning, children of God. It's good to see everybody here today. So, what did I bring? Salt. salt. Right, if you see a salt shaker, you just automatically assume that there's going to be pepper. Yeah. Because usually we, you don't usually just see salt without pepper. They go together like peanut butter and jelly and chips and dip, and um, whatever else, things that we think about that always go together. Now, are they the same? Yeah, they're different, right? They're in the same kind of container, but they're different. And to, if you ever taste them, they, they taste very different. And yeah, they can be, this one can be spicy, and it, sometimes pepper makes me sneeze. This one is very salty. If you have too much, it's woo. You need lots of water. Yeah. But they go together perfectly. And they can take something that's um, boring and make it taste even more better. And so, you know what? People are like this. Friends are like this. We. Yeah, we don't like spicy pepper, but it goes well with salt. Yeah. And so sometimes we are like that, that we look different or we like different things, but together we're good friends. Yeah, true friends can take something like, yeah, like something boring and make it more exciting, like game day today, right? We're going to have lots of fun games and lots of good friends it would be no fun if it was just like the salt and it was just us playing the game by ourselves. But we're going to have lots of friends to play together. So, just like you won't find salt without pepper, you won't find friends. True friends are always, they will always stick together, help one another, and be there. So let's work our hardest to be good friends. Okay, can we fold our hands? Graham, sit up so you can fold your hands, please. Thank you. Dear God, thank you for good friends. Thank you for us helping one another. Help us to always be good friends to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, friends, you can go to Children's Church. And I invite everyone else to stand in body and or spirit as we sing together, bind us together, which you'll find in your bulletin.
Our gospel lesson today comes from the fifth chapter of the book of Matthew. The verses are 21 through 37, and it can be found on page 4 in the New Testament in your pew Bible. Jesus said, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not commit murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has done something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the grounds of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the great, the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for the opportunity to come together and worship you and to hear what your message is for us this day. Open our hearts and minds so that what we hear today is the message you have prepared. And when we hear it, may we follow what your will is for us this day. Amen. I was appointed to the Monroe United Methodist Church the July after the horrific Sandy Hook shootings. And Monroe and Newtown are neighbors. So although I wasn't there during the immediate aftermath, I was there to offer help and comfort as they mourned, especially with the year anniversary. Monroe was able, as one of the town leaders said, to show love and compassion for our fellow neighbors. For one of the Monroe school buildings had been closed, and they were now able to offer it so that the Sandy Hook students could go there while they determined what to do with the building where the shooting occurred. I was so impressed when I drove around town and saw all the green ribbons and the signs which, which said, choose love. The overwhelming sense of unifying love was palpable. 
Jesse Lewis, one of the precious lives that were lost, had written Nurturing Healing Love on a chalkboard before his death. And this has since turned into a movement which is now in schools nationwide. The three words led to the creation of the formula for choosing love, which can be used by anyone at any time, anywhere in the world, to manage their response to any situation. Courage plus gratitude plus forgiveness plus compassion in action equals choosing love. I think that is something that Jesus was trying to teach as he was on the Sermon of the Mount thousands of years ago. At first reading, this passage from Matthew seems really harsh. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Yikes. And some of these other passages can really make you wonder. But that's the beauty of us as United Methodists, for we look at the scripture with our reason, our tradition, and our experience, and try to see what the meaning is for us today. Same thing with the Deuteronomy text, which I think is pretty straightforward. Uh, Brian Mass, who is a bishop in the Lutheran Church, said, if you obey God's commandments and ways, then you shall live. If your heart turns away, then you shall perish. He proposes that when we look at the Matthew text in light of this Deuteronomy text, it's more like a loving parent might admonish a child rather than threats that seem to overwhelm us and make us shake with fear. The, if you touch the hot stove, you will be burned. So if a young stot, you tell your young children, but then if they go to touch that, you're going to take their hand away and maybe speak to them a little more harshly because you don't want your child to be burned. I think rather than the threat of harsh justice or judgment, what Jesus is really trying to show us is compassion and care. God has laid out these commandments so that we will have life and life in abundance. When we make bad choices, we will go away from God rather than draw nearer to him. So it's as if we are deliberately putting our hand on a hot stove. Some choices will inherently cause us harm. Jesus was trying to speak life into the community, to one's conduct toward brothers and sisters. It was as though these sentences are clarifications of a larger declaration of Jesus. He said, because I have called you into life-giving community, Therefore, I am giving you these rules to help you sustain your community life. Some things may end up to be a negative consequence, but rather when you choose life and love, it will knit the community together and will cause compassion and love and trust in a new and special way. In this community, there is no room for anger, insult, name-calling. No room for behaviors which chip away at the relationships and the community as a whole. Choose love. It's way more important to bind up one another than it is to drop coins in a box. So that's what... God, Jesus was saying, go and repair those relationships. I'd rather have you with open and forgiving hearts and love than just you give your offerings 
out of a need to give them. Yet sometimes reconciliation is not possible. If the other person is not ready to receive it, at least you have offered it. And also, if that relationship is abusive, you can offer forgiveness, but that does not mean you stay in a toxic relationship. Leave it up to God to continue to work within that other person's heart. Lift them up in prayer. But I don't think Jesus wants us to stay in relationships which are not life-giving. Yet, open, continue to stay open that perhaps that person will turn their lives and their hearts around. And that was precisely what Paul was speaking about in his letter, which we heard from the first Corinthians. For there was lots of jealousy and quarreling among one another. They were seeking to belong to one church like the church of Paul or the church of Apollos rather than the church of Jesus. Sometimes we end up following a person rather than remembering we are supposed to be following Jesus. So don't get yourself out of get your yourself out of that feeling of where you're supposed to be. Don't focus on who's doing what and be jealous if they're getting more attention than you. Rather, focus on planting. Focus on working together. Focusing on building up rather than tearing down. Sometimes that's hard because we are human and will inevitably fall and stumble. The key is that we need to recognize that and work on it. As soon as you begin to feel anger and resentment and jealousy, look and see what you can do. It's okay to be angry, but it is not okay to react out of that in a way that's going to hurt others. I can only imagine the anger of the victims of the Sandy Hook massacre. Yet they took their anger and instead turned it into something positive. Instead of seeking retaliation, they have worked together to ensure that another community does not experience what they experienced. They stro strive to bring life and love to all. And so may we, too, strive to be more Christ-like. May we strive to be more united, no matter whether we agree or not, whether we're salt or pepper, we can work together. So let's choose life. Let's choose love. Let's continue to make a difference here in this place so that others might be drawn and find Christ and the one who plants and the one who waters will have a common purpose we will work together we I love this you are God's field God's building so let us go out and build up one another amen God has blessed us with the gift of life. For the blessings that come in our lives, let us offer our thanks and show our gratitude to God through today's offering. Let us receive our tithes and our gifts.
Let us pray together. Gracious God, we present these offerings. May we be reminded of the blessings you have shared with us as individuals and as a community of believers. You have fed us with the milk of your grace and have nurtured us with a love that knows no limits or boundaries. May our sharing this day reveal our priorities and our promises. For we belong to you and offer you our gifts that they may be used in mission and in ministry to bring glory to you, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Let us share now in our joys and our concerns. First, I will. Gracious God, here we are again on a Sunday, turning our hearts towards you. We come to you today not as individuals, but as your people, as your church family. Even in our prayers today, O oh God, we are reminded that we sit among one another, that when we share our prayers together with you, you answer them. And so, God, we give you great thanks for all the joys we have shared. We also lift up to you those who are struggling, those who are in need of healing, those who are in need of comfort. Oh God, we also lift up to you on this day relationships that are in need of healing. Help those who continue to have anger within their hearts. Help us when we feel those feelings to turn them into something positive so that we truly can make a difference. Oh God, we only can forgive because you have forgiven us. We can only love because you have first loved us. And so we turn all our blessings back over to you with gratitude. And especially today, we thank you for Jesus, who came and lived among us, who taught us, who helped us so that we may truly be the best people we can be. And so it is in his precious name, we pray all of this on this day. Amen. And now let us stand in body and or spirit for our final hymn, number 557, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds.
brothers and sisters, go forth and choose life. Walk in the ways of Christ. Be strengthened by the Holy Spirit that the world might know the love and the peace of God. So let us go in peace. Amen.